Fish fin, Wikipedia article audio. Fins are usually the most distinctive anatomical features of a fish. They are composed of bony spines or rays protruding from the body with skin covering them and joining them together, either in a webbed fashion, as seen in most bony fish, or similar to a flipper, as seen in sharks. Apart from the tail or caudal fin, fish fins have no direct connection with the spine and are supported only by muscles. Their principal function is to help the fish swim. Fins located in different places on the fish serve different purposes such as moving forward, turning, keeping an upright position or stopping. Most fish use fins when swimming, flying fish use pectoral fins for gliding, and frog fish use them for crawling. Fins can also be used for other purposes, male sharks and mosquito fish use a modified fin to deliver sperm. Thresher sharks use their caudal fin to stun prey, reef stonefish have spines in their dorsal fins that inject venom, anglerfish use the first spine of their dorsal fin like a fishing rod to lure prey, and triggerfish avoid predators by squeezing into coral crevices and using spines in their fins to lock themselves in place. For every type of fin, there are a number of fish species in which this particular fin has been lost during evolution. Types Bony fishes Dorsal fins are located on the back. A fish can have up to three dorsal fins. The dorsal fins serve to protect the fish against rolling, and assist it in sudden turns and stops. The function of the adipose fin is something of a mystery. It is frequently clipped off to mark hatchery raised fish, though data from 2005 showed that trout with their adipose fin removed have an 8% higher tail beat frequency. Additional information released in 2011 has suggested that the fin may be vital for the detection of, and response to, stimuli such as touch, sound, and changes in pressure. Canadian researchers identified a neural network in the fin, indicating that it likely has a sensory function, but are still not sure exactly what the consequences of removing it are. A comparative study in 2013 indicates the adipose fin can develop in two different ways. One is the salmoniform type way, where the adipose fin develops from the larval fin fold at the same time and in the same direct manner as the other median fins. The other is the carisiform type way, where the adipose fin develops late after the larval fin fold has diminished and the other median fins have developed. They claim the existence of the carisiform type of development suggests the adipose fin is not just a larval fin fold remainder and is inconsistent with the view that the adipose fin lacks function. Research published in 2014 indicates that the adipose fin has evolved repeatedly in separate lineages. Heterocircle means the vertebrae extend into the upper lobe of the tail, making it longer. Lobe finned. Protocircle means the vertebrae extend to the tip of the tail and the tail is symmetrical but not expanded. Homocircle where the fin appears superficially symmetric but in fact the vertebrae extend for a very short distance into the upper lobe of the fin. Ray finned. Diffocircle means the vertebrae extend to the tip of the tail and the tail is symmetrical and expanded. Most Paleozoic fishes had a diffocircle heterocircle tail. Most modern fishes have a homocircle tail. These appear in a variety of shapes, and can appear. Finlets are small fins, generally behind the dorsal and anal fins. In some fish such as tuna or sauris, they are rayless, non-retractable, and found between the last dorsal and slash or anal fin and the caudal fin. Cartilaginous fishes Bony fishes form a taxonomic group called osteichthyes. They have skeletons made of bone, 
and can be contrasted with cartilaginous fishes which have skeletons made of cartilage. Bony fishes are divided into ray-finned and lobe-finned fish. Most fish are ray-finned, an extremely diverse and abundant group consisting of over 30,000 species. It is the largest class of vertebrates in existence today. In the distant past, lobe-finned fish were abundant. Nowadays they are mainly extinct, with only eight living species. Bony fish have fin spines and rays called lepidotrichia. They typically have swim bladders, which allows the fish to create a neutral balance between sinking and floating without having to use its fins. However, these are absent in many species, and have developed into primitive lungs in the lungfishes. Bony fishes also have an operculum, which helps them breathe without having to use fins to swim. Generating thrust Lobe-finned fishes are a class of bony fishes called Sarcopterygii. They have fleshy, lobed, paired fins, which are joined to the body by a single bone. The fins of lobe-finned fish differ from those of all other fish in that each is borne on a fleshy, lobe-like, scaly stalk extending from the body. Pectoral and pelvic fins have articulations resembling those of tetrapod limbs. These fins evolved into legs of the first tetrapod land vertebrates, amphibians. They also possess two dorsal fins with separate bases, as opposed to the single dorsal fin of ray-finned fish. Controlling Motion the coelacanth is another lobe-finned fish which is still extant. It is thought to have evolved into roughly its current form about 408 million years ago, during the early Devonian. Locomotion of the coelacanths is unique to their kind. To move around, coelacanths most commonly take advantage of up or down wellings of the current and drift. They use their paired fins to stabilize their movement through the water. While on the ocean floor their paired fins are not used for any kind of movement. Coelacanths can create thrust for quick starts by using their caudal fins. Due to the high number of fins they possess, coelacanths have high maneuverability and can orient their bodies in almost any direction in the water. They have been seen doing headstands and swimming belly up. It is thought that their rostral organ helps give the coelacanth electroperception, which aids in their movement around obstacles. Ray-finned fishes are a class of bony fishes called actinopterygii. Their fins contain spines or rays. A fin may contain only spiny rays, only soft rays, or a combination of both. If both are present, the spiny rays are always anterior. Spines are generally stiff and sharp. Rays are generally soft, flexible, segmented, and may be branched. This segmentation of rays is the main difference that separates them from spines. Spines may be flexible in certain species, but they will never be segmented. Reproduction Spines have a variety of uses. In catfish, they are used as a form of defense, many catfish have the ability to lock their spines outwards. Triggerfish also use spines to lock themselves in crevices to prevent them being pulled out. Lepidotrichia are bony, bilaterally paired, segmented fin rays found in bony fishes. They develop around actinotrichia as part of the dermal exoskeleton. Lepidotrichia are usually composed of bone, but in early osteichthyans such as Chirolepi, there was also dentine and enamel. They are segmented and appear as a series of discs stacked one on top of another. The genetic basis for the formation of the fin rays is thought to be genes coded for the production of certain proteins. It has been suggested that the evolution of the tetrapod limb from lobe-finned fishes is related to the loss of these proteins. 
Cartilaginous fishes are a class of fishes called chondrichthyes. They have skeletons made of cartilage rather than bone. The class includes sharks, rays, and chimeras. Shark fin skeletons are elongated and supported with soft and unsegmented rays named ceratotrichia, filaments of elastic protein resembling the horny keratin in hair and feathers. Originally the pectoral and pelvic girdles, which do not contain any dermal elements, did not connect. In later forms, each pair of fins became ventrally connected in the middle when scapula coracoid and pubioischiatic bars evolved. In rays, the pectoral fins have connected to the head and are very flexible. One of the primary characteristics present in most sharks is the heterocircle tail, which aids in locomotion. Most sharks have eight fins. Sharks can only drift away from objects directly in front of them because their fins do not allow them to move in the tail first direction. As with most fish, the tails of sharks provide thrust, making speed and acceleration dependent on tail shape. Caudal fin shapes vary considerably between shark species, due to their evolution in separate environments. Sharks possess a heterocircle caudal fin in which the dorsal portion is usually noticeably larger than the ventral portion. This is because the shark's vertebral column extends into that dorsal portion, providing a greater surface area for muscle attachment. This allows more efficient locomotion among these negatively buoyant cartilaginous fish. By contrast, most bony fish possess a homocircle caudal fin. Tiger sharks have a large upper lobe, which allows for slow cruising and sudden bursts of speed. The tiger shark must be able to twist and turn in the water easily when hunting to support its varied diet, whereas the poor beagle shark, which hunts schooling fish such as mackerel and herring, has a large lower lobe to help it keep pace with its fast-swimming prey. Other tail adaptations help sharks catch prey more directly, such as the thresher shark's usage of its powerful, elongated upper lobe to stun fish and squid. Other uses Foil-shaped fins generate thrust when moved, the lift of the fin sets water or air in motion and pushes the fin in the opposite direction. Aquatic animals get significant thrust by moving fins back and forth in water. Often the tail fin is used, but some aquatic animals generate thrust from pectoral fins. Evolution Cavitation occurs when negative pressure causes bubbles to form in a liquid, which then promptly and violently collapse. It can cause significant damage and wear. Cavitation damage can occur to the tail fins of powerful swimming marine animals, such as dolphins and tuna. Cavitation is more likely to occur near the surface of the ocean, where the ambient water pressure is relatively low. Even if they have the power to swim faster, dolphins may have to restrict their speed because collapsing cavitation bubbles on their tail are too painful. Cavitation also slows tuna, but for a different reason. Unlike dolphins, these fish do not feel the bubbles, because they have bony fins without nerve endings. Nevertheless, they cannot swim faster because the cavitation bubbles create a vapor film around their fins that limits their speed. Lesions have been found on tuna that are consistent with cavitation damage. In anglerfish, the anterior of the dorsal fin is modified into an elysium and esca, a biological equivalent to a fishing rod and lure, the bones that support the dorsal fin are called pterygophore. There are two to three of them, proximal, middle, and distal. In rock-hard, spinous fins the distal is often fused to the middle, or not present at all. Scum-bride fishes are particularly high-performance swimmers. 
Along the margin at the rear of their bodies is a line of small rayless, non-retractable fins, known as finlets. There has been much speculation about the function of these finlets. Research done in 2000 and 2001 by Nowen and Lauder indicated that the finlets have a hydrodynamic effect on local flow during steady swimming and that the most posterior finlet is oriented to redirect flow into the developing tail vortex, which may increase thrust produced by the tail of swimming mackerel. Fish use multiple fins so it is possible that a given fin can have a hydrodynamic interaction with another fin. In particular, the fins immediately upstream of the caudal fin may be proximate fins that can directly affect the flow dynamics at the caudal fin. In 2011, researchers using volumetric imaging techniques were able to generate the first instantaneous three-dimensional views of wake structures as they are produced by freely swimming fishes they found that continuous tail beats resulted in the formation of a linked chain of vortex rings and that the dorsal and anal fin wakes are rapidly entrained by the caudal fin wake approximately within the time frame of a subsequent tail beat once motion has been established, the motion itself can be controlled with the use of other fins. Evolution of Paired Fins Classical Theories Evolutionary Developmental Biology From Fins to Limbs The bodies of reef fishes are often shaped differently from open water fishes. Open water fishes are usually built for speed, streamlined like torpedoes to minimize friction as they move through the water. Reef fish operate in the relatively confined spaces and complex underwater landscapes of coral reefs. For this maneuverability is more important than straight line speed, so coral reef fish have developed bodies which optimize their ability to dart and change direction. They outweat predators by dodging into fissures in the reef or playing hide and seek around coral heads. The pectoral and pelvic fins of many reef fish, such as butterfly fish, damselfish, and angelfish, have evolved so they can act as brakes and allow complex maneuvers. Many reef fish, such as butterfly fish, damselfish, and angelfish, have evolved bodies which are deep and laterally compressed like a pancake, and will fit into fissures in rocks. Their pelvic and pectoral fins are designed differently, so they act together with the flattened body to optimize maneuverability. Some fishes, such as puffer fish, filefish, and trunk fish, rely on pectoral fins for swimming and hardly use tail fins at all. Male cartilaginous fishes, as well as the males of some live-bearing ray-finned fishes, have fins that have been modified to function as intermittent organs, reproductive appendages which allow internal fertilization. In ray-finned fish they are called gonopodia or andropodia, and in cartilaginous fish they are called claspers. Gonopodia are found on the males of some species in the Anablepidae and Poseleidae families. They are anal fins that have been modified to function as movable intermittent organs and are used to impregnate females with milk during mating. The third, fourth, and fifth rays of the male's anal fin are formed into a tube-like structure in which the sperm of the fish is ejected. When ready for mating, the gonopodium becomes erect and points forward towards the female. The male shortly inserts the organ into the sex opening of the female, with hook-like adaptations that allow the fish to grip onto the female to ensure impregnation. If a female remains stationary and her partner contacts her vent with his gonopodium, she is fertilized. The sperm is preserved in the female's oviduct. This allows females to fertilize themselves at any time without further assistance from males. In some species, the gonopodium may be half the total body length. Occasionally the fin is too long to be used, 
as in the lyre tail breeds of Zephophorus hellari. Hormone treated females may develop gonopodia. These are useless for breeding. Similar organs with similar characteristics are found in other fishes, for example the andropodium in the hemiramphodon or in the good itty. Claspers are found on the males of cartilaginous fishes. They are the posterior part of the pelvic fins that have also been modified to function as intermittent organs, and are used to channel semen into the female's cloaca during copulation. The act of mating in sharks usually includes raising one of the claspers to allow water into a siphon through a specific orifice. The clasper is then inserted into the cloaca, where it opens like an umbrella to anchor its position. The siphon then begins to contract expelling water and sperm. The Indo-Pacific sailfish has a prominent dorsal fin. Like scombroids and other billfish, they streamline themselves by retracting their dorsal fins into a groove in their body when they swim. The huge dorsal fin, or sail, of the sailfish is kept retracted most of the time. Sailfish raise them if they want to herd a school of small fish, and also after periods of high activity, presumably to cool down. The oriental flying gurnard has large pectoral fins which it normally holds against its body, and expands when threatened to scare predators. Despite its name, it is a demersal fish, not a flying fish, and uses its pelvic fins to walk along the bottom of the ocean. Robotic fins Fins can have an adaptive significance as sexual ornaments. During courtship, the female cichlid, Pelvic Acromes tenutus, displays a large and visually arresting purple pelvic fin. The researchers found that males clearly preferred females with a larger pelvic fin and that pelvic fins grew in a more disproportionate way than other fins on female fish. There are two prevailing hypotheses that have been historically debated as models for the evolution of paired fins in fish the gill arch theory and the lateral fin fold theory. The former, commonly referred to as the Gagenbohr hypothesis, was posited in 1870 and proposes that the paired fins are derived from gill structures. This fell out of popularity in favor of the lateral fin fold theory, first suggested in 1877 which proposes that paired fins budded from longitudinal, lateral folds along the epidermis just behind the gills. There is weak support for both hypotheses in the fossil record and in embryology. However, recent insights from developmental patterning have prompted reconsideration of both theories in order to better elucidate the origins of paired fins. Carl Gagenbohr S. concept of the Archaeterygium was introduced in 1876. It was described as a gill ray, or joined cartilaginous stem that extended from the gill arch. Additional rays arose from along the arch and from the central gill ray. Gagenbohr suggested a model of transformative homology that all vertebrate paired fins and limbs were transformations of the archaeterygium. Based on this theory, paired appendages such as pectoral and pelvic fins would have differentiated from the branchial arches and migrated posteriorly. However, there has been limited support for this hypothesis in the fossil record both morphologically and phylogenically. In addition, there was little to no evidence of an anterior-posterior migration of pelvic fins. Such shortcomings of the gill arch theory led to its early demise in favor of the lateral finfold theory proposed by St. George Jackson Mivart, Francis Balfour, and James Kingsley Thatcher. Diversity of Fins 
The lateral fin fold theory hypothesized that paired fins developed from lateral folds along the body wall of the fish. Just as segmentation and budding of the median fin fold gave rise to the median fins, a similar mechanism of fin bud segmentation and elongation from a lateral fin fold was proposed to have given rise to the paired pectoral and pelvic fins. However, there was little evidence of a lateral fold to fin transition in the fossil record. In addition, it was later demonstrated phylogenically that pectoral and pelvic fins arise from distinct evolutionary and mechanistic origins. Recent studies in the ontogeny and evolution of paired appendages have compared finless vertebrates, such as lampreys, with chondrichthyes, the most basal living vertebrate with paired fins. In 2006, Researchers found that the same genetic programming involved in the segmentation and development of median fins was found in the development of paired appendages in cat's harks. Although these findings do not directly support the lateral fin fold hypothesis, the original concept of a shared median paired fin evolutionary developmental mechanism remains relevant. We find a similar renovation of an old theory in the developmental programming of chondrichthian gill arches and paired appendages. In 2009, researchers at the University of Chicago demonstrated that there are shared molecular patterning mechanisms in the early development of the chondrichthian gill arch and paired fins. Findings such as these have prompted reconsideration of the once debunked gill arch theory. Fish are the ancestors of all mammals, reptiles, birds, and amphibians. In particular, terrestrial tetrapods evolved from fish and made their first forays onto land 400 million years ago. They used paired pectoral and pelvic fins for locomotion. The pectoral fins developed into forelegs and the pelvic fins developed into hind legs. Much of the genetic machinery that builds a walking limb in a tetrapod is already present in the swimming fin of a fish. In 2011, researchers at Monash University in Australia used primitive but still living lungfish to trace the evolution of pelvic fin muscles to find out how the load-bearing hind limbs of the tetrapods evolved. Further research at the University of Chicago found bottom walking lungfishes had already evolved characteristics of the walking gates of terrestrial tetrapods. Citations In a classic example of convergent evolution, the pectoral limbs of pterosaurs, birds, and bats further evolved along independent paths into flying wings. Even with flying wings there are many similarities with walking legs, and core aspects of the genetic blueprint of the pectoral fin have been retained. The first mammals appeared during the Permian period. Several groups of these mammals started returning to the sea, including the cetaceans. Recent DNA analysis suggests that cetaceans evolved from within the even-toed ungulates, and that they share a common ancestor with the hippopotamus. About 23 million years ago another group of bear-like land mammals started returning to the sea. These were the seals. What had become walking limbs and cetaceans and seals evolved independently into new forms of swimming fins. The four limbs became flippers, while the hind limbs were either lost or also modified into flipper. In cetaceans, the tail gained two fins at the end, called a fluke. Fish tails are usually vertical and move from side to side. Cetacean flukes are horizontal and move up and down, because cetacean spines bend the same way as in other mammals. Ichthyosaurs are ancient reptiles that resembled dolphins. They first appeared about 245 million years ago and disappeared about 90 million years ago. This seagoing reptile with terrestrial ancestors converged so strongly on fishes that it actually evolved a dorsal fin and tail fin for improved aquatic locomotion. 
These structures are all the more remarkable because they evolved from nothing. The ancestral terrestrial reptile had no hump on its back or blade on its tail to serve as a precursor. The biologist Stephen Jay Gould said the ichthyosaur was his favorite example of convergent evolution. Fins or flippers of varying forms and at varying locations have also evolved in a number of other tetrapod groups, including diving birds such as penguins, sea turtles, mosasaurs, and sea snakes. The use of fins for the propulsion of aquatic animals can be remarkably effective. It has been calculated that some fish can achieve a propulsive efficiency greater than 90%. Fish can accelerate and maneuver much more effectively than boats or submarine, and produce less water disturbance and noise. This has led to biomimetic studies of underwater robots which attempt to emulate the locomotion of aquatic animals. An example is the robot Tuna built by the Institute of Field Robotics, to analyze and mathematically model thunniform motion. In 2005, the Sea Life London Aquarium displayed three robotic fish created by the Computer Science Department at the University of Essex. The fish were designed to be autonomous, swimming around and avoiding obstacles like real fish. Their creator claimed that he was trying to combine the speed of tuna, acceleration of a pike, and the navigating skills of an eel. The Aqua Penguin developed by Festo of Germany, copies the streamlined shape and propulsion by front flippers of penguins. Festo also developed Aquarae, Aquajelly, and Aracuda, respectively emulating the locomotion of manta rays, jellyfish, and barracuda. In 2004, Hugh Hare at MIT prototyped a biomechatronic robotic fish with a living actuator by surgically transplanting muscles from frog legs to the robot and then making the robot swim by pulsing the muscle fibers with electricity. Robotic fish offer some research advantages, such as the ability to examine an individual part of a fish design in isolation from the rest of the fish. However, this risks oversimplifying the biology so key aspects of the animal design are overlooked. Robotic fish also allow researchers to vary a single parameter, such as flexibility or a specific motion control. Researchers can directly measure forces, which is not easy to do in live fish. Robotic devices also facilitate three-dimensional kinematic studies and correlated hydrodynamic analyses, as the location of the locomotor surface can be known accurately. And, individual components of a natural motion can be programmed separately, which is certainly difficult to achieve when working with a live animal. Bibliography